Hello chaps and chapesses, and today we're going to talk about adapting these to these. Yes, we're going to talk about adapting vintage lenses to modern cameras. And when I mean modern cameras, I mean mirrorless cameras and DSLRs. So I think first we should talk about what do I mean by a vintage lens? Well, vintage lenses are old 35mm film lenses used on film cameras. Those things that we used to use in bygone eras. Some of these cameras were absolutely phenomenal, and the glass that was on them was even better. But they seem to have been forgotten in the past. But right now, due to the advent of mirrorless cameras, we're seeing a huge resurgence because they are very easy to adapt to mirrorless cameras especially, but also to DSLRs. Any of these different brands from Canon, Pentax, Nikon, or any of the old Russian lenses on M42 mounts can very easily be adapted to mirrorless cameras. So why would you do this? What's wrong with modern lenses? Modern lenses are crisp, sharp, they have autofocus, and they're extremely good. My first reason for wanting to use vintage lenses is because it gave me an opportunity to use some pretty fast glass. As we all know, modern lenses which are at 2.8 or those kind of very fast lenses are really expensive. <laughs> really expensive and what's great about vintage lenses is you have the opportunity to adapt lenses from a bygone era which could be f2 f2.8 f1.4 and even faster without breaking the bank as someone who likes to experiment with lots of different focal lengths this was a prime opportunity to actually have a chance to shoot a lot of that fast glass Many of these 35mm SLR lenses were extremely well built. Some of them are built like tanks. Some of them are probably built from tanks. But they're mostly metal construction, excellent lens quality. Most of these lenses have wonderful dampened focus throws, which just, it's an extremely tactile experience. And the aperture blades have got hard stops on either side. I mentioned cost, the joy of vintage lenses is that actually they are incredibly cheap. You can find them in so many different places. Um, one of my favorite spots is eBay, but these lenses cost anything from 10 pounds to 150. Most of them are between 30 and 50 pounds, which is very little to pay for a well-built lens, which can produce some fantastic imagery. You can kit yourself out, for example, for, with a set of fast prime lenses for the cost of just one modern autofocus lens. Now that's definitely worth exploring. Now if you, like me, like to explore with your photography and try lots of different scenarios, whether it be portrait shooting or whether landscapes or wildlife, this gives you an opportunity to try lots of different focal lengths without breaking the bank. You can pick up 135 millimeter telephotos, you can pick up 200 millimeter telephoto F4s for very little money which is a great chance to go and have a play, have fun with it. Vintage lenses also have an enormous amount of individuality, which is something which I think has been lost in modern lens construction, mostly because of the imperfections in the glass and also the imperfections in the build. Many lenses of this era have wonderful different kinds of bokeh, which will add huge character to your work. And because a lot of people are shooting on modern lenses, this actually brings a little uniqueness to the photographs or the imagery or the video that you are taking. You may even find huge differences in the same models of lenses. For example, some of the Russian copies of the German lenses, such as the Helios's and the Jupiter lenses, you may find that even the same model, many different lenses have got different characters between them. This is really exciting. The next point is the manual control, the feel of actually moving the focus throw yourself, changing your aperture manually, because obviously these are manual lenses, there's no autofocus here, 
and what I have discovered certainly is it has made me a better photographer. This is my opportunity to get a much better grip of using the exposure triangle and especially with a mirrorless camera I can see exactly the effects of changing the aperture or changing the shutter speed are going to have immediately on my image. Manual lenses have also been used for a long time in cinematography. The benefit of using a manual lens for cinematography is that you have a better control over focus pulling and quite often modern autofocus lenses will actually focus on the wrong spots. You also, if you are clever, you can find one of those lenses which has been declicked, which means that when you move the aperture ring, it's a smooth movement like some of the uh, Helios's and also some of the Canon FDs you can have declicked. This means you can change your aperture mid shot while you are actually videoing, which can bring some really interesting effects into your cinematography. The other really cool thing about vintage lenses is their size. Some of these lenses are absolutely diminutive. For example, this little Indostar pancake lens is a phenomenal little lens, but it's absolutely tiny. And it's good fun to shoot with and produces surprisingly sharp imagery. But also your vintage 135 millimeter is considerably smaller than its modern equivalent of the time now. So how do you get into using vintage lenses? Well, the first thing you need to do is go and find them. And the easiest place, as I mentioned before, is probably eBay. You will find a large quantity of different vintage lenses. You can just type in which focal length and which aperture you're looking for. And quite often you will also find many of these wonderful old lenses attached to some really old or beautiful cameras, some of which don't work. And you can pick up lenses that way as well. Then there's also flea markets or there are secondhand shops. Quite often you can find a little treasure trove of old lenses which have been forgotten, which can now be adapted to modern cameras and breathe new life into them and also your photography. When it does come to buying on eBay though, you do have to be quite careful. You have to read the descriptions extremely carefully. Make sure that the lenses don't have fungus, which is a kind of almost like a lattice that grows across the lens and can ruin your image. Make sure that there's no haze, that potentially there's no oil on the aperture blades. These are things you need to look out for in the description. And if you can't see it clearly on the photographs which are posted on eBay, then just ask the seller to send you some pictures of particular angles that you're looking for. I've done that on a number of occasions and then realized that actually there is something in the back of the lens which I wouldn't have spotted until after I'd bought it. eBay also offers an enormous amount of buyer and seller protection. So if you're not happy with your product, invariably you can then return it if it is not as it was stated. So you've got your vintage lens. So how do you attach this to this? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to identify what fitting that the lens has. So in this instance, it's a Canon FD mount and you are gonna need an adapter which will go from Canon FD to whichever camera you are adapting it to. In my case, an EOS R. So then you have to go and locate adapters. Now adapters are very simple. They are normally just metal rings and these rings will have the adaption for whichever camera you're fitting to one side and then will fit your lens on the other side. And they're made for pretty much every mount and every kind of camera you could possibly imagine. Again, Amazon or eBay is a great source for these. They're not expensive. You're looking at anything between 10 and 20 pounds. I like to go with ones which have got metal mounts because then you know that it's actually gonna be a much more secure connection between your camera and your lens. The last thing you want is for it to fall off and smash. So once you've identified whether it's a Canon FD or a Pentax K or a Nikon mount or an M42, then you can figure out which adapters you need. So what do adapters do? What's important is this wonderful thing called flange distance. Flange distance is essentially the distance between the back of your lens and the sensor of your camera. And in 35 millimeter film terms, this was the distance between the back of the lens and your film. Now, all of these different manufacturers made their cameras so that they would fit their own lenses. 
proprietary lenses was a way of keeping you in their systems because you would buy a camera with a lens, you would then buy a load of other lenses and you were very unlikely to then go and buy another brand of camera. And why is this so important? Infinity focus. So these lenses were designed to operate in a certain distance and if that distance is not correct then your lens will not focus to infinity. On DSLRs this could create a bit of a problem because the flange distances also incorporate the mirror so you have to be very very careful that your lens when you are focusing it does not extend backwards and break the mirror in your DSLR. So therefore you need to look up on the internet and there's all sorts of different charts of whether each particular lens is compatible to your DSLR. With mirrorless cameras this is really not an issue and you can adapt almost any lens to any mirrorless camera. So whether that's going to be Canon FD to Canon RF or whether it's going to be M42 to NEX or the Sony mount, Sony E mount, any of these can be catered for. And because mirrorless cameras have a very short flange distance, all that you need are these adapters which have got the correct distances to allow your lens to then focus to infinity. One thing I probably should mention is actually with the Canon FD, you have to make sure that once you have put it on, you switch this little ring that then says off, which actually then makes the aperture blades come into light. That's something that I hadn't actually taken into consideration when I first got one of these, and I found it a little confusing. Now, when it comes to adapting to things like Canon EF mount, you will find that you may need a different kind of adapter, one which has got a small lens in the inside of it. Now, I didn't understand when I first started looking into this what the difference between these two types were, but that little piece of glass is an extender that allows you to then focus to infinity. Funnily enough, Canon EF is one of the hardest ones to adapt to. The problem with this is that little piece of glass which comes in these adapters invariably is not made of the same quality of glass that you would find in your lens, and that can actually detract from the quality of your image. When I first started adapting lenses, I was using a Canon 80D, an old DSLR, and when I first tried it, I was actually pretty unimpressed, and I actually just stopped. I had a couple of old lenses which I had taken from my father, and I wanted to try them and see whether I could get them to work, and I was pretty disappointed with the results, so I just shelled it. A little while later, I upgraded to a Canon EOS R, and that changed everything. Now, with a mirrorless system, life was easy. Okay, so now we've got our lens, we have our adapter, we have our camera. So how do we put these together? It's very simple really. It's a bit like crap Lego. All you do is you take your adapter, line it up with the red dots as if it was your camera, click it together, twist and lock, there's your adapter, and now you can put that straight onto your camera body. As I said, with the Canon FD, just make sure that you then twizzle this ring which unlocks the aperture blades. So it takes the aperture blades off automatic and allows you to then actually utilize the aperture blades. So this then allows the aperture to move. The next thing that you have to do is go into the menu system on your camera. You have to make sure that your camera has the ability to shoot with the lens off. And there's normally a setting in either the Sony and the EOS R for certainly in all most other cameras that allows you to fire the shutter with no lens attached. So you need to activate this setting. Then this comes into the real joy of mirrorless. DSLRs, you will have to focus by using your eye, but mirrorless has got this wonderful technology called focus peaking. And focus peaking brings up a highlighted section in the viewfinder that then shows you exactly which part of your image is in focus. And if you need to check it, you can then use your man manual focus assist, press this button, and then you can zoom in. You can zoom in five times, 10 times, and then you can see exactly whether your image is sharp. And at that point, fire off the shutter. In some cases, gaining infinity focus may not happen exactly where the stop is on the end of the lens, so therefore you just need to check that. That's mostly because there's always some slight minor tolerance differences within the setup that you've got running. So then it comes to vintage lenses themselves and buying them. Now I have to admit, this is a little bit of a rabbit hole. You hear of people with gear acquisition syndrome or gas. This little hobby is certainly one of those. Because they are so inexpensive, 
you can't help yourself but buy more. And there are so many different varieties to try, and so many of them have got all sorts of phenomenal different characteristics. Here we have the Helios 44-2, which is an f2 lens, and this is an old Russian lens. And this thing creates some of the most magical swirly bokeh that I've ever seen. But this is just one of those lenses that anybody who is interested in vintage lenses, you've got to get one of these. So there are huge numbers of different lenses to go and find and play with. There are the Canon FDs, there are the Pentax Super Tacomars, there are the Pentagons, there are the Helioses and the Jupiters, and the list goes on and on and on and on, and each one of them has its own unique characteristics. You may find that some of them have got a slightly yellow tinge to them, and this is because there's actually a radioactive element thorium baked into the glass. So you will find this on some of the Canon FDs and also the Super Tacomars. It's an extremely addictive little hobby, this. And it has added a huge interesting facet to my photography, one I have really, really enjoyed. It's completely taken over from actually shooting with modern lenses. I have found it so incredibly addictive. There's a huge amount of resource out there for those people who are interested in vintage lenses. There are lots of different reviews of all the different kinds on YouTube. There are Facebook groups and also there are podcasts for those of us who want to immerse ourselves in vintage lenses completely. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I will look forward to seeing you on the next one.